I should have waited till the morning to shovel. Written by J. Water 17 and narrated by Clancy Pasta. It was a Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, or I guess so a certain league doesn't get litigious, the big game. This was going to be a memorable one for sure, but not for anything good. Normally, this time of year, I'd be surrounded by my close friends, enjoying great food, and for the majority of the last five years, on edge, hoping my team can win. Not this year. Everyone in my friend group had decided that we should not gather together to watch the game this year. While I agreed with the decision in principle, it was not without great sadness. I had not seen any of them in person since November, and lately I had been feeling very alone and isolated. Then, it started to snow. I sat uncomfortably, staring back at my television screen at what was quickly becoming a blowout with intermediate glances out the window. I was half tuned into the actual game itself, my attention strained between my friend's group text and imagining what food I would have prepared had I picked up groceries before the storm. As the minutes went by, the snow quickly picked up in intensity. The northeast is no stranger to snow. But, like a lot of things, this year its presence was just unrelenting. Feeling a little cooped up in my apartment, I thought I might as well do something about it. I resolved that I was going to head out and do a little shoveling. Despite the howling of the storm, I persisted and was out the door before halftime. The weather was furious outside. This was one of those times that Mother Nature likes to reiterate that all of us are in fact her bitches. Standing out there just steps away from my front door, I may as well have been stuck in the middle of an arctic whiteout. I started to head over to the driveway to clean off my car. Thinking God I had an old push broom at my disposal, I made quick work knocking layers of snow off my car's body. The snow now having been expertly displaced on the ground at my feet, I began to shovel out the driveway. With every toss, I would wonder how much of a difference this would ultimately make. It was guaranteed that I would still have some shoveling to do tomorrow. Still, I just felt like I needed to complete this task, no matter how inconsequential, to reset and enjoy the rest of my night. I was about 10 minutes in and was in a groove. I noticed that during all this time I was out there, I didn't see one car on the street, not even any plows. This was a little strange as I live only a couple streets down from a police station, so the plows are usually moving to keep the roads clear. I shrugged it off and thought everyone must be behind because of the game. Not like there was going to be a lot of people on the road tonight anyway. I decided that I'd give it another five minutes before I'd head back in my apartment where warmth, football, and a comfy couch awaited me. Maybe I'd even make myself a spiked hot chocolate as a reward for my hard work. I was surprised how much this shuffling helped me get over my feelings of isolation on what was usually a joyous occasion. Caught in thought and locked in on finishing my task, I was a little out of it when I heard it. Screech. My head shot up quickly as I stared up at the skies above and tried to catch sight of whatever made the sound. Nothing. Screech. I peered at the closest cluster of trees looking for any sign of movement. Nothing. Taking this a sign that it must be quitting time, I began my trek inside. I made my way to the entry of the driveway that leads out into the street. I'm about to turn to head up my apartment stoop when I stopped and heard the sound of footfalls in the snow behind me. I saw a figure in a white parka slowly approaching me. His arms were wrapped around his body and his hood was pulled tight over his head. I thought it must have been my landlord coming to take care of the property. 
I approached him with all the gusto any renter has when talking to their landlord. Normally it takes this guy a week to respond to a broken light fixture, yet here he is and the snow hasn't even stopped. It was strange, to say the least. Hey Dave, must be a terrible halftime show for you to show up here in this weather, I shouted at him. No reply. Feeling that I may have insulted him, I try to backtrack a little. I'm just kidding. I think I got a good head start for snow tomorrow. You need me to move my car or anything? No reply. He just stared directly at the ground, never once lifting his head. Thinking he may not have heard me, I gave it one more try. I think we still got a ways to go with this storm, so I'm gonna get inside and get warm. Second half should be starting soon, I said. No reply. Dave just persisted in my direction, just following in my footsteps, direct and with purpose. One step surely followed by the next. Each step fell right in place with my own footsteps. Left, right, left, right. Never once did he look up. His gaze never left the ground. Now thoroughly creeped out, I retreated back to my residence. I climbed up the stairs of the stoop and am about to open the door when I saw Dave again in my periphery. I turned to face him, but this time he had his back turned to me. I noticed his head was up for the first time and all I see is a white sphere of the back of his parka's hood. Dave? I said the first bit of fear in my voice rising to the top. I took a few steps towards him. Suddenly, his neck snapped all the way around. I froze mid-step and my pupils locked on the figure, and for the first time, I saw it. My eyes stared directly into twin large orbs with a complexion of coal. They were cold lifeless, and black. With a sickening slowness, the creature's mouth began to open, stretching from left to right with visceral, organic spit. The inside was nothing but a vacant void of pink gums, except for the pronounced hooked black beak embedded in the middle. Then, the beak opened. Screech. I ran through the door and slammed it behind me, slipping in my still wet boots. I pulled myself in front of the door, barricading it as the outside was hit with a flurry of loud bangs. I just sat there on the ground as the sound of the knocks echoed throughout my apartment's hallway. Finally, after about a minute, the knocking stopped. I composed myself enough to lock the deadbolt of the front door. I ran to get inside my apartment room in a desperate attempt to add another barrier between me and whatever the hell that was outside. I quickly got inside my room, terrified of what was to come next. I jumped into my bed and sat there like a kid who had just seen a real-life monster. I remained huddled in my blankets, not daring to move for the rest of the night till I eventually passed out. I woke up the next morning barely able to process what had happened. The first thing I noticed was the large fist-sized bruise on my hip. It wasn't a dream. I had definitely gone out to shovel last night. I was sure of this after I saw my discarded jacket, gloves, and hat still on the living room floor. Still. I thought maybe all this loneliness was just messing with my head. I chalked it up to the storm causing me to see things in the dark. I glanced out the window. Sure enough, there was still a good layer of snow that had accumulated overnight that needed shoveling. I began to head outside, ready to greet this Monday morning with new optimism. This ended 
the moment I opened my door. On my front step, I saw deep slashes across the front door, along with a fresh pair of footprints in the snow. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode, and uh, please subscribe for more. If you enjoyed it, I'd also really appreciate a like, and uh, tell me what you thought of it in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would go to my Patreon page in the description. For as little as a dollar a month, you get access to ad-free narrations, and uh, it really helps out a lot. You can also follow me on Twitter at ClancyPasta, and uh, yeah, just thank you all for listening. Hope you enjoyed and have a great night. Cheers.